I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. Filling the gas tank is an even more painful experience now that prices at the pump are beginning to start with a number four. In some locations, prices now top $4 a gallon, and while it's bad enough for those of you who commute, it's also getting rougher for those who need vehicles to conduct business. At Absolutely Flowers in Middletown, the decision has been made to hold the line on flower and plant delivery prices for now. Store owner Janet Barbario says it's hard for small businesses like hers to keep absorbing the rising gas prices. We're still trying to keep our prices as fair as we can and right about now it actually costs us more than we charge for delivery in the city of Middletown and the outskirts because we do go to Otisville and Howells and Slate Hill and Goshen and these types of areas that do take quite a bit more gas. What we've resorted to at this point is an electric car you know, the electric gas car, and that has certainly helped keep the cost down, but it still cost averages out to be more than we charge for the price of uh, delivery. The price of a gallon of regular gas in New York State has gone up about seven cents in the past week alone, and prices are up about a dollar a gallon compared to this time last year. Industry analysts think gas prices will peak in June, but the continued uncertainty in the Middle East could push prices even higher. A notice of claim was to be filed this week in the Court of Claims for, by Yul Bukal, who says the failures of the State Department of Parole and the Office of Family Services were factors that led to the death of his four-year-old son, Mark, in 2009. The lawsuit blames the state for allowing Corey Bird to live in the Newburgh home with Mark and his mother, despite Bird's criminal history, including prison time served for reckless endangerment relating to injuries suffered by his 14-month-old son in 1998. Bird is uh, currently awaiting trial on murder charges in connection with Mark's death. The legal claim seeks unspecified damages for Bukal and Mark's estate. The executive director of the Mental Health Association in Orange County says last week's tragedy in Newburgh should serve as a wake-up call for the need to provide stronger support for programs that deal with mental illness. Nadja Allen says the suicide death of LaShandra Armstrong, the woman who killed herself and three of her children by driving her minivan into the Hudson River, is a reminder that we have a long way to go when it comes to providing access to those in serious need of mental health services. According to Allen, less than half of all American adults with mental health problems get proper treatment each year. Funerals for the four victims of the Newburgh tragedy will be held Thursday in Spring Valley. Hudson Valley Congressman Maurice Hingey says he's getting mixed messages from the FBI when it comes to the possibility of relocating its regional office in Goshen to a site in the city of Newburgh. Hingey says he was encouraged to hear the FBI director say the Bureau would reconsider Newburgh on its list of potential places to put an expanded facility. But, Hinchy says, a day after the director's comments, he got a letter from the FBI's regional director saying the initial decision to exclude Newburgh would stand. And she says he'll now seek some clarification. He and others believe moving the FBI office to Newburgh would send a strong message that the federal government is committed to uh, helping reduce crime and gang violence in the city. And the town of Deer Park has decided to add its name to the list of 20 area communities that are part of a lawsuit to fight a proposed electric delivery rate increase proposed by Orange and Rockland Utilities. The request would hike the delivery portion of customer electric bills by about 35 percent over three years. Deer Park Supervisor Carl Brabenick said the proposed increases in both residential and commercial rates are not economically viable in places like Deer Park. Oh, and our official say they need to raise additional revenue because of rising property taxes, skyrocketing state assessments, and storm recovery costs. If the State Public Service Commission gives its blessing, the higher rates would go into effect July 1st. We'll have to get through another rainy day before we can enjoy another day of April sunshine. Tomorrow will be cloudy with showers likely. Temperatures will reach the mid-50s. The weather gets better Thursday with the temperatures climbing into the upper 60s under a mostly sunny sky.
Stay on top of breaking news here at Record Online, and for a complete wrap-up of stories that impact your life, pick up tomorrow's edition of the Times-Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.